every morning I wake up and I grab a cup of coffee, throw some butter in it, toss a little cinnamon in it, and then I step outside onto my back porch to have a moment with God. I sit in awe as I look at the paintings that he provides me in the sky. I listen to the melodies that he sends me through the birds. And it never ceases to amaze me. Rain, snow, sleet, or shine, man. He's always got something to show me. It's absolutely incredible. Sometimes uh, great joy will be brought to my heart. You might catch me out there with tears streaming down my face, just joyful as can be. And other days there'll be tears of, I don't want to say despair, but man, there'll be pain in my heart because of who we are as humans. That pain doesn't last long because I know how the story unfolds and that brings me great joy. That brings me an incredible amount of joy. Shortly thereafter, I'll grab a Bible, usually the King James Version, because I thoroughly enjoy that poetic nature of the words that are used in that version of the Bible. Today, I've got the New International Version, so there's no mistaking what's being said here. My mama gave me this Bible, 1992, Christmas Day. And if that ain't a heck of a Christmas present, thank you, Mom. I ask God every day, like, where he wants me. And lately it's been Jeremiah. And I don't know how this plays out because I haven't finished it. I'm up to chapter 5. The one thing that I know up to this point is God is not happy with the nation of Israel. He is not happy with Judah. They have been incredibly unfaithful to him. And um, I'm not a historian, so I can't tell you how much of this has already been played out or if it's already played out before and we're just recycling. I mean, if you read the Bible enough, you start to see that there is this recurring theme with us humans. It's just over and over. Redemption, and then we fall back, and then redemption, and we fall back. It's just like this never-ending cycle complete lack of repentance. Mm. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 11. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have been utterly unfaithful to me, declares the Lord. They have lied about the Lord, they said. He will do nothing. No harm will come to us. We will never see sword or famine. The prophets are but wind, and the word is not in them. So let what they say be done to them. Therefore this is what the, what the Lord God Almighty says. Because the people have spoken these words, I will make my words in your mouth a fire, and these people the wood it consumes. I need you to imagine that for a moment. He goes on, O house of Israel, declares the Lord, I am bringing a distant nation against you. What are we seeing today? An ancient and enduring nation. And we can say whatever we want about these folks, but they are absolutely enduring. A people whose language you do not know, whose speech you do not understand. Their quivers are like an open grave. All of them are mighty warriors. They will devour your harvest and food, devour your sons and daughters. They will devour your flocks and herds, devour your vines and fig trees. With the sword, they will destroy the fortified cities in which you trust. Yet even in those days, declared the Lord, I will not destroy you completely. And when the people ask, why has the Lord our God done all this to us? You will tell them, as you have forsaken me and served foreign gods in your own land, so now you will serve foreigners in a land not your own. I don't know that God is unwilling to go back on his word. But I also know that if this is what's going to happen, then this is what's going to happen. Which means no matter how much money that we throw at Israel... 
no matter how many bombs or rounds of ammunition we send to Israel, we're not changing that. And I don't know, maybe that type of support, if you will, I don't, it's not good enough. Sure, send prayers of protection over the nation of Israel. Yeah, go ahead. That's that's good. I don't think that's bad. But I think what's more important is that we change the prayer. We change the prayer and we ask God to change the posture, the heart posture of his people. Because if he's going to change his mind, then it would seem to reason that he's going to do so because they have repented. And they are no longer unfaithful. You see, if the charge is unfaithfulness, and I start addressing the charge, and I repent of my sins, of my trespasses, then maybe he will change his mind. So my prayer today changes for these folks. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that these this people, the nation of Israel, that their heart posture is changed, Father. I pray that they see you for who you are. I pray that their hearts and minds are opened up to believe and understand that you already sent your son and he took he took a punishment that we all deserve. I pray that they see you, Father. I pray that they truly, truly see you. I pray that they burn down everything in their everything in their nation that doesn't serve you. That's gonna hurt some feelings, Father. And to those feelings I say, be within as well and help them, whoever doesn't understand that. I pray that you help them understand that, Father. Because there is only one God. There is only one God. And I pray this in the mighty name of my King, my Lord, my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.